Hello, everyone. We're so glad to have you streaming into the room right now. Um, we'll get started in just a moment as more people have the opportunity to enter. Um, we're really glad that you're with us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, happy to have you here. Welcome to Duke. We'll get started in just a minute. All right, these numbers are still ticking up. Um, so we'll wait just a minute before we launch into the formal program. But for those of you just joining us, happy to have you, glad you're here, welcome. And congratulations. All right, I see the numbers still going up, but we have a limited time this morning, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to everyone. My name is Anne Shostrom. Um, I work in the undergraduate admissions office at Duke, leading our international team. Uh, I chair our international admissions committee, and I have primary responsibility for reading applications from Europe and Singapore. So special welcome to anyone from those places. Um, I am joined by several wonderful colleagues and um, community members here at Duke. But first, I'd like to point out a wonderful colleague and friend um, who is an indispensable part of the international admissions team, Nikki Baskin. Nikki, can you give us a quick introduction of yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, I work with Anne on the international team, and my primary responsibility is sub-Saharan Africa and part of India. So welcome, welcome. Thanks, Nikki. Um, so on behalf of the whole international team, I'll say that carefully reading this year's record-breaking number of applications challenged us in these past months as we considered which applicants might be the best fit for Duke. And I want to begin today by offering you not only our congratulations again on your admission, um, we're so thrilled for all of you, but also by offering you on behalf of the whole international community here, um, our thanks. If you are a part of this Zoom today, it means that you were admitted to Duke. And that means that your applications were those that over the course of months were shining the most brightly. Um, the ones we were the most excited to read and evaluate and discuss, um, the ones which included Why Duke essays that reminded us about the wonders of this university and that helped us to understand how you might make Duke an even better place than it already is. So again, um, congratulations and also thank you. In case you're curious, I can share just a little bit about the admitted students. Um, and those who so far are enrolling. So this group that you're a part of, these admitted students come from schools in 74 different countries across the globe. Um, counting by citizenship and home address, you can add at least a dozen more countries to that total. As of last night, so not quite 12 hours ago, um, which is still three weeks before the May 2nd reply deadline, we have international students already enrolled in the class from 43 different countries. Um, so we're really excited. We hope that number will grow. Um, I can only guess right now, but I anticipate that international students will make up at least 15% of Duke's class of 2026. Um, and I hope that many of you will be among them. So far, 5% of the students we've offered admission to um, this year have declined their Duke offers. And we understand this isn't the right school for every single person or the best choice. Um, but 34% have already said yes, and 61% have yet to reply. I imagine that most of you um, in today's meeting are in the latter two categories. And again, we are absolutely thrilled to have you with us. If you haven't already enrolled, we hope that you'll decide to join what might just be the most international class that Duke has ever had. Um, and for all of those you, for all of you who do decide to enroll, we cannot wait to welcome you in person to campus in August. So again, congratulations, thank you, and welcome. Um, and so now, we hope to give you a, a little bit more personal glimpse of life at Duke, and we hope to answer whatever questions may be on your mind. 
Um, in just a moment, I'm going to pass the mic to um, our terrific panel today. But first, we have a couple housekeeping details to go through. Um, so this is important. Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. If you would like to request accommodation services for an information session or for any Zoom, please contact Idella Hackett at I-D-E-L-L-A dot H-A-C-K-E-T-T -T at duke.edu or by phone at one for the U.S. 919-684-0186 to arrange these for a later date. We are recording this session um, and it will be available on YouTube. So uh, feel free to look at it again or recommend it to your friends. All right, and so we've already explained exactly what we will do um, today. We will have some quick questions um, to start off. And then we hope that we will be able to answer any other questions that you would like to give us in the Q&A. Um, so please feel free to do that. At this point, I'm going to turn things over to our terrific panel we have here today who will start our program by introducing themselves and again jumping into a lightning round of questions from Kevin Darko, Duke's Senior Associate Dean of International Students. So Kevin, take it away. All right. Uh, thank you, Anne, for the lovely introduction. Um, we'll go ahead. We have the names of folks uh, here. So when you answer your first question, let, let's actually just go ahead and do introductions, excuse me. Faith, uh, would you mind just uh, introducing yourself to the audience? Hello, everyone. My name is Faith, and I'm a freshman from Singapore. I actually started Duke after taking a gap year. I'm not really sure what I'm going to major in yet, but I've taken classes in comp sci, econ, philosophy, and French. Awesome. Annie? Hi everyone, my name is Annie. I'm from Beijing slash Melbourne. I'm a sophomore majoring in economics and public policy, and I'm really excited to be here today. Ihan? Hi, I'm Ihan. I'm a junior majoring in neuroscience and stats with a minor in anthropology, and I'm from Ch um, Shanghai, China, and I went to high school in Connecticut. And then I know her. Hi, I'm Ainoa. Um, I'm from Peru. I did secondary school in Peru. I currently, I'm not sure what I want to major in, but it'll probably be something along the lines of economics or psychology or even both. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we got a great panel. Um, we have a couple of questions that we've prepared. If any of our audience members would like to ask a question, please go ahead and put it in the chat and then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. Um, Annie, can you tell us a little bit about the best class that you've taken here at Duke? Um, this may be a little bit controversial, but I actually really like the introductory public policy class, Pop 155. I think even though it is controversial in that it's a very difficult class, but it really entirely changed my worldview in that it really teaches you how to write well, how to think well, how to think logically. And I really encourage anyone who's thinking about Pop Pop as a major to potentially take it in their like sophomore year once they are settled down like with a major. Awesome. Ihan, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, um, I want to recommend a class which is called Educational Anthropology. It's actually not in my major, but I really enjoyed it. Like what Annie said, it's also a class that I cha like changed my view. And I got to know the professor, which is the most charismatic woman. And she is over 70 years old, but she's like really open to sharing her stories and listen to us, like everybody talking in the class. And she even invited us to her home. Um, in a Duke signature program, which is called Duke Conversations, that they invite professors and professors will invite students to their home and provide dinner. So I think it's a really good class and I got to know the really best professor at Duke. We talked about signature opportunities there. Um, Annie, I know you're really involved in uh, research and a few others. Can you expand a little bit about that? Yeah, so Duke offers a lot of opportunities for undergrad to get involved with all the things from research to like chatting with building relationship with the professor. So for example, I'm involved with Bass Connections with this, uh, which is this undergraduate research team that you can apply since your freshman year to get involved with and the research topic stretch all the way from like engineering to social sciences to humanities. 
So regardless of your interest, you'll always be able to find something that you're fascinated with. I was involved with the with the policy surveillance of health policy around the world team. And that was really a fun experience because I got to work with a lot of master student, PhD students, as well as really renowned researchers. And the other thing I guess is focus, which freshmen, if you want to, please apply. And that was actually my second class that I really enjoyed because my focus class, I was in the ethics global leadership cluster. And in that I took several seminar classes I, that I would have never taken if I did not take that class. Um, but then those classes entirely, like this is cliche, entirely changed my worldview in that like one of the classes was taught by Professor Philipson. And he just like entirely shifted how I view the economy, how I view public policy and how I view like our society today. And because focus, you would have small focus dinner and live with your friends in focus. So you get to build like a really close knit relationship. Even though my class was entirely online, I still had like a really great group of friends from that focus experience. Um. I, I know, can you expand a little bit maybe on just like friends and the community that you've developed here at Duke? Yeah, for sure. I think that for me, what has made my Duke experience even better has been my friends. Like from the moment I got here, people at Duke were like crazy welcoming. Everyone like is so happy to have you here and people just reached out. They were like, want to go and have lunch and that is something that I would have never expected but honestly my friends here are my family and I could not describe like when people ask me why Duke or why should I apply or why like do you like it so much for me it's always the people and my friends are the most supportive people I know around here um and they've honestly just made it like that much better because they all know what you're going through. They all can relate, but they're always there to like push you to become a better person. And it's honestly amazing. You know, one of the best things that you get to do at Duke is um, eat out in the uh, Bryan Center Plaza, the BC Plaza, or head to some of our cool dining spots. Um, Faith, where do you like to eat around campus? Um, I really like to eat at Wu. I think Il Forno is my favorite place to eat at Wu. So I'm actually like a major foodie, like I have a food account and everything. And I like think that the food at Wu is objectively good. Like when you compare it like with restaurants, it's like restaurant quality in my opinion. And um, my favorite thing to get at Il Forno for lunch is basil pesto fettuccine with um, more basil and cheese and salmon. And that's the best lunch you could have. Awesome. Um, how about you, Ihan? Um, I actually think of some place in downtown Durham, but there's a lot of good places in on campus, and West Union is definitely a really good spot that I hang out with friends and then eat good stuff. I think the place I was thinking downtown is called M Coco, and there are a lot of good ramen. It's like an Asian fusion restaurant, and I really recommend anyone who come to visit Duke to visit um the M Coco restaurant. Awesome. Um, so one of the things, challenges coming over here, obviously, um, is just transitioning to Duke. Um, uh, I know, how, can you talk a little bit maybe about that transition? I know you talked about having a good friend network here, but what were some of the challenges and maybe what were some of those uh, successes? I think that just leaving home is a challenge in itself because you're transitioning from your life in high school and back at home to a college student life and it can definitely be scary and I think the biggest thing for me was learn that it was okay to be scared and embrace that um those challenges sometimes also coming from Peru the food was one of my biggest concerns because we have amazing food down there and I think that Duke has done a great job in making me not be as scared of um not having Peruvian food, although we do have an alpaca, uh, which is a Peruvian restaurant nearby. But yeah, the food was definitely my biggest um, challenge, get, just getting used to it. But Western Union, which we call Wu, you um, students will learn that at Duke, everything is like an acronym for everything. And there's like Wu, BC and all that stuff. But um, I think that it was also another challenge I had was just learning that there are different words and meanings we can give to different buildings at Duke and although it was hard at times because you can feel a bit lonely you can feel that it's like you're just being put into this brand new world 
people around you are your best resource and Duke has amazing ways in which you can get to know people and just make the whole experience better. Annie, uh, you shared that you're uh, a resident advisor or an RA. Um, and I think RAs are really helpful with uh, student transitions and also supporting students in our residential uh, campus. Can you talk a little bit about that experience and maybe some of the uh, advice that you would have uh, for first year students as they're coming in? Yeah, so I'm actually a resident advisor for freshman students. So as soon as you land on the airport and on the campus, your resident assistant will be there before you are there uh, because they arrive earlier. So they will be over there to like help you with any like kind of questions you may have, such as, oh, how do I get to food place? Like, I'm getting lost on this campus. Like, where can I get a map? Or like, how can, can you point me to some directions? Like, what would be your advice over transitioning? For example, I have, uh, I'm international student and I have several international students, residents, and I will help them with like, okay, if you need help with English resources, I can direct you to those. Or like on the other hand, if you need help with mental health resources or academic resources, like your RA is living right next to you to help you and guide through any transition problems that are like concerns. So they're just like there to chat and have free food with you um, because RA always hold events like weekly events. For example, I'm going, my next event is going to be like de-stressing soap making with bubble tea. So all my residents are welcome to come along and your RA will always hold this kind of event. Um, you know, I think there's something for everybody at Duke. Um, and I know we're getting a lot of questions from the audience. So I want to take some time to get some of those questions. Um, before we jump in, I wanted to just mention a couple of things. Um, one, in terms of your transition to Duke, we are really looking forward to welcome you, welcome you to Duke University this fall. Um, we're going to have a number of resources available for you uh, throughout the summer. Um, we're going to have an international student orientation that's going to be virtual. Um, and I'll explain the reason why uh, in a little bit. Um, so the first week of August, we're going to be doing a lot of virtual programming specifically for international students, um, talking about your transition and preparing you for, some, uh, for coming and arriving here at Durham. Um, international students are going to be able to move in on August 18th and 19th. Um, and then they'll be joining the, what we're, it's a new orientation program we call it. It's an immersive orientation, an immersive experience orientation where all Duke students, all Duke freshmen um, are gonna be taking part. So all of our first years, um, starting on Sunday the 20, uh, 21st, uh, we'll be heading out onto their immersive experiences. So um, you'll be a part of that, just like everybody else is a part of your first year class. And then um, the International House will be sponsoring a number of programs to support your transition and your first year experience. Um, throughout that first year, because we recognize we have a lot of information coming to you. We want to share it in different ways and share it throughout the semester so that you are prepared and ready uh, so that you can have a successful um, start to your career here at Duke. Um, and were there any uh, questions, Anne and Nikki, uh, any, any questions we wanted to bring in from the audience? There are. And so there are the majority of the questions are actually about the most immediate transition, the one that you're referring to already. And there's some, there's some details um, that I'm gonna ask about in just a second, but I'd like to start by um, telling people that in May, um, so not in April, but in May for enrolling students, once we have solidified the group who will be the class of 2026, um, you will have your version of the Duke Blue Book. Um, and that will have basically every detail. This is, a, this is a, a publication that Student Affairs does for incoming students um, of all sorts, different ones for first year students and transfer students and so on. But it will have every detail that you can imagine um, to guide you in terms of what you need to do and when. And so last year's version is available online and I put the link in the chat if you'd like to look at it. Um, it will be, I assume, similar this year, um, but know that that's coming for you in a version that is tailored specifically for you. Um, also, once you have enrolled, once you have replied officially to the admissions offer, those of you who have already, again, that's great. Um, those of you who are still deciding, we're just crossing our fingers. Um, you will shortly thereafter hear from a representative about the visa process. So just keep an eye on your email. It, we will help, it will be fine. Duke has an entire office dedicated um, to working with students to help them secure their visas 
And I know it's a really difficult time in the world and that there's, there's a lot of backlog, um, but we have every confidence that every student who enrolls at Duke will be able to get a visa to come and we'll, we will help you with that. Now, in terms of specifics, Kevin, about the, the moving in, um, people are asking about specific dates, which I, which I think you've shared, but are also asking, like, will I be able to move into my dorm right away or will I move in somewhere else and then have to move again? How, how does that work? Great question. Um, so all of our students, I'm going to repeat the dates, um, will be able to move into their dorm room on August 18th or August 19th. So if you arrive in the U.S. earlier in the week, you wouldn't be able to move into your, uh, into your dorm room. However, 18th, 19th, and all of our students are actually moving in on the 20th. Um, but international students have the ability to move in early uh, so that you can have a couple of days to settle in before um, orientation. So um, we will we will probably do some light programming on Friday. So if your parents are here, we're probably we're planning to host a dinner on campus uh, for family members who do travel with their students. Uh, but um, 18th and 19th. Awesome, thank you. And for those who are wondering about exactly when they'll get their room assignments and their housing information, um, those are assignments that are made at Duke only once we have the entire class. So. The reply date, as, as all of you may know, um, for students admitted regular decision is May 2nd. It is only after we have all of the students secured that that um, that the Office of Duke can actually make those housing assignments. So look for those later on in the spring. I'm sorry, I don't know the exact, exact date, but the blue book that comes out in May may give you that answer. People are wondering about um, what it's like to live on campus, how many students share a room. Uh, can anyone on the panel tell us a little bit more about your own specific living experience or, or that of your friends um, that might help students who are trying to imagine themselves at Duke? I can start uh, with that. Freshmen will live on a separate campus that we call East Campus, so the chapel and sophomores, juniors, and seniors will leave on West. Um, but East Campus is like an only freshman area, which is honestly amazing because the community is great. And I live in Gilbert Adams, which we call GA, another acronym. Um, and honestly, the people around you make your dorm experience great. I live alone, but I have friends that have roommates and they've had amazing experiences because people are Dukits are so great. Um, they really do get along with um, those that they pay, get paired up with. And some of them have gotten like really close with them. And next year we are able to have a quad, which is a group of friends that you will be living together with, not necessarily in the same room, but all like nearby. And that just like makes it even better. Um, I do live alone. I like um, having my own space, but it is definitely part of the Duke experience to have a roommate. Um, and those that have say it is honestly one of the best things that has ever happened to them. I can also speak to the experience of having a roommate. Um, I got assigned a random roommate. And at first I was really worried about it because I'd always like been sleeping alone, like had my own room and like I never like shared a room with someone in such close proximity. But I can confidently say it was such a great decision to go with a random roommate. My roommate is from Texas and I didn't know we would like get along as well as we did, but we're like super, super close. We've met each other's parents and like we're really good friends and we're gonna be living in the same quad next year in the rooms next to each other. And I just loved the dorm experience. I love East Campus. I love going to 9th Street, which is like just next to East Campus. It's just perfect. Like, I don't want to be lost. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, so there's some general questions, but I think that they they focus. Um, the theme here is about what, what are some things that admitted students um, should be doing like right now? What should they be thinking about in advance of coming to Duke really, really far ahead, other than the logistics of the visa, um, what are the things that you think might help them prepare? There are, oh. Go ahead, I know, go ahead. <laughs> I know that uh, for the class of 2025, there was an Instagram ran by students. I would definitely suggest giving it a follow and even if you feel uh, comfortable with it, like post or like send in your picture and a small caption that they will post. That's the best way to get to know more students. 
also there are a lot of whatsapp groups that will be going around at least i know that i use whatsapp but also they are group me uh groups join them like you lose nothing in just joining the group and looking at what people are saying that is how i met my closest friend so when i got a duke i already knew people that i was uh kind of close with in the sense that i knew them from zooms zooms are also your best friend and i know that someone was asking what they can do at one once they get on campus to know more people don't be afraid to just ask someone do you want to go out for lunch because the first few, few weeks everyone is in the same position as you and they all just want to get to know more people and getting asked to lunch is honestly so nice there are so many great spots to go and eat and yeah just like not don't be afraid to reach out not only to like incoming students that may be in the class of 2026 but also to students that are already in duke if there is one thing that i can confidently say is that we will love talking about duke and if you ask us about it we can go on and on for hours awesome thank you okay we have a very specific practical question which is is there any information on which banks have atms at duke as international students will need to open bank accounts any advice on bank accounts um, so I, I opened Bank of America account and there is an ATM and I think there's also Wells Fargo on campus, um, just in BC Plaza. So that's very convenient. There are ATMs for a lot of banks. Um, I would recommend going with a bank that you feel like if Bank of America, I feel more, most students here have either Bank of America or Chase. I'm talking for international students and my friends. Uh, East Campus, as Faith mentioned, is really near to 9th Street, which is um, like a street with a lot of stores. Um, and Chase has a store, like not a store, but yeah, like a place there, which is like very easy to go with if you're looking for that uh, proximity to a bank. But any bank works great here. And in BC Plaza, um, BC Plaza, I'm sorry, in Bryan Center, which is what we call BC, you will have like an area with a lot of ATMs that you can come like use. Uh, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase are I think the most common for students here. Thank you. And so moving from a very practical specific question, um, I wanna ask a final question of the panel. I think this is a really great, um, courageous and important question. I'm just gonna read it word for word. It says, I'm not very familiar with US terminology for races. For example, I have no idea whether the term people of color is offensive and whether I should call someone black or African American. I'm terrified that I would cause an incident without knowing it. Are there any resources to help me with that during orientation week since it's important to the whole community or should I deal with it before I arrive on campus? Yeah, uh, we, we, we hear that from, from students and I think it's um, completely appropriate to be thinking about those sorts of things and think about the best way uh, to be part of a community that we value equity, we value inclusion, we value diversity. Um, we are planning, especially for international students, there's a lot to learn about coming over to a new country and there's a lot to learn about how to navigate and how to be supportive and how to be an ally. So. As part of that transition, we are going to plan programs and dialogues and conversations over that first semester so that students can feel empowered and educated and feel that they can be um, a part of uh, the process. So um, stay tuned. We'll provide um, some information for that in the fall. Thanks, Kevin. And I know we're getting close to the end here, but I want to say that I, I really appreciate that question. And I think that anyone who's a part of this community would appreciate the, the approach um that whoever asked that anonymously is taking so please don't be scared know that you're coming into a community of of open-minded people who are eager to connect with those like them and those unlike them um and that a lot of those differences we know are visible and a lot are not and um this is this is a welcoming inclusive place um and we have intentionally consciously seen things in you that we think would make you great additions to this place. So since it is now 929, um, let's see who has some parting words of advice, anything they'd like to say as a final thought for this entering group of the class of 2026. 
Um, I think I would say don't worry too much or anxious over the future like at Duke. I think the best thing like the thing to do now is to enjoy high school life and then like enjoy the best last month with your friends at high school, which is very important. Super. Faith? Yeah, um, I was going to say like don't sweat the small stuff like everything will work out. I was very worried about how um, all the logistics would work out, whether like I'd be happy here and it all really did work out. I was choosing between a lot of different schools and I ended up choosing Duke and I would say like I do not regret the decision and um, I hope all of you do too. Awesome. I know. For me, um, I would say just enjoy the moment. Like you should all be so proud of what you've accomplished. Getting into Duke is a great thing and you must all be so proud don't be as don't be scared to reach out um and as faith was saying don't worry about the little details duke will be so supportive in that sense and everything works out i got my visa the day i was traveling but it worked out so um i would just say like enjoy everything and if uh you haven't visited a campus don't worry because it will live up to the expectations awesome annie yeah, since I'm the final one, I'll just be quick. Um, in addition to all that things that they have mentioned, catch up with your friends at home, catch up with family, catch up, spend some time to yourself, like enjoy the time in family before you, you come to Duke, because it'll be a very long flight, at least for me and for a lot of people in this room. And yeah, just take take time to enjoy your current days and don't plan so much ahead. Like um, when I was a freshman before I attended, I was like crafting my four year plan. But you will discover that your four year plan changes so much once you come to Duke. There are so many unexpected surprises that just like pop up and will completely disrupt your plan. So don't plan that much. Just plan for your first semester and enjoy. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. Kevin and Nikki, we're a bit over time, but there's is there anything you'd like to squeeze in at the very end here? I would just say trust the process. Um, it's kind of a combination of what everybody said. Things will happen in due time, whether it's you arriving to Duke or you figuring out what you're going to major in and what you're going to accomplish here while you're a student. Excited to see you here. Awesome. Thank you to all of you who are on this panel. Thank you to all attendees. Um, my closing thought just again is congratulations. Thank you and welcome. We can't wait to see you in August. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.